it's making more sense to me. So thank Don't you. Don't zoom in. Because it messes up the photo. Yeah. It makes it like wobble. Okay, go ahead. Right. Sorry. So I guess I should stand up and film. So, <laughs> um, so we have a limited amount of time in which to hold the president accountable for his impeachable offenses. And this is the issue our nation must face. Should the President of the United States be allowed to commit crimes or other impeachable offenses? No. Or will we defend the Constitution and our democratic institutions at a time when nationalism is on the rise and democracy is under attack? I'm sure I'm speaking to an audience of supporters here. But this is no time for politics as usual. We are inundated with propaganda from sources both foreign and domestic. This is not the time to allow the president to commit crimes. This is the time to stand up and fight back. We cannot allow our president to be above the law and expect to preserve our democratic institutions at the same time. We must hold the president accountable according to the procedures set out in the Constitution, specifically for this purpose. There is no other way. To allow the President to be above the law is tyranny. Letting the President get away with crime is not going to win us the next election. We must hold the President, let's see, I see no evidence that supporting an impeachment inquiry will cause any Democrat to lose their seat. But I can certainly see how allowing the president to get away with crimes could backfire on the Democrats. We are giving Trump a huge gift by failing to prosecute him. Going over the last three years of everything he has said and done could go badly for him and the Republicans. And I don't believe for one second that Trump or the Republicans want an impeachment. Are we so afraid of losing the next election that we can't hold the president to account for his crimes? <clears throat> After two years of investigation, the Miller Report is out and it shows impeachable offenses. Have we come to the finish line and then lost our nerve? There is no valid argument, no justifiable position, no viable political strategy that begins with, the president should be allowed to get away with crimes because. One cannot say with one breath that the president has committed crimes. And then with the other say, oh, well, he's the president. He's allowed to do those things. The argument that the president has committed crimes, yet should not be held accountable, is so legally and politically deficient that it cannot stand. Rich, I have to interrupt you really quickly. Could you please stop saying crimes and start saying impeachable offenses? Because that's one of the problems, is that everybody yeah. thinks that there has, has to be crimes. Well, one thing about that, and I do say crimes, and I do interchange it with impeachable offenses, but the fact is, is that there are allegations that he's committed crimes. So it's very much a relevant question. But I, I take your point, because a lot of people think it has to be crimes. It doesn't have to. Uh, it's just, and yeah, we'll go, we might go into more of that. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'll wait to finish your thing. I'm going to go back and let the John say. So, the president has committed crimes, as Nancy Pelosi says, and that's another thing Nancy Pelosi says. He's committed crimes. He should be in jail, but then apparently she doesn't want to do her job. Then, Congress should use the procedures outlined in the Constitution for holding the president accountable for the law. There's already enough evidence to impeach. So you've heard that a sitting president cannot be indicted for a crime. The framers considered the special case of the president and decided that Congress needed special powers in order to deal with a corrupt and incompetent public official. So they created impeachment in order to ensure that the president and other public officials would not be above the law. The most disturbing thing about the Miller Report is that Trump encouraged a foreign government to commit espionage against the United States and its institutions, while at the very same time that espionage was actually happening. 
at the same time that Donald Trump Jr. was looking for dirt on Hillary Clinton from foreign agents, and candidate Donald Trump was asking Russia to steal Clinton emails. Russian agents were hacking into Democratic Party and Clinton servers and stealing emails. And they're working with Julian Assange to release those stolen emails. So after seeking to benefit from Russian espionage, high-level officials in the Trump campaign lied and attempted to cover up their contacts with Russian agents, and many went to jail. President Trump then attempted to obstruct the investigation into the very criminal activity that he had encouraged and sought to benefit from. Anyone who has obstructed justice as the president has would be going to prison. There's always a reason, whether it's a matter of convenience or fear of reprisal or some other reason, to allow rich and powerful people to get away with crimes. It's always easier to let them go than to fight them and their money and influence. So, but as Representative Al Green says, history will not judge us kindly if we fail to hold the president accountable for his conduct. If we allow President Trump to get away with impeachable offenses so that he can say that it was all a witch hunt, the Miller report amounted to nothing thereby allowing his, our people to believe that he's been totally exonerated, then we will see his supporters empowered and energized, his approval rating rise, because the president has been effectively acquitted of all wrongdoing, and the Miller investigation was a colossal waste of time and money. We are not guaranteed to win the presidential election, and if we do, there will be hell to pay. If we allow President Trump to get away with impeachable conduct, if he wins the election, which he just might because we've effectively acquitted him, he will begin to investigate the investigators. And he's already begun to do that, perhaps, by investigating um, Andrew McCabe and attacking the credible, credibility of Don McGahn, two men who stood up to him, according to the Miller Report. To investigate public servants just for doing their job is a direct insult to our democratic institutions. If Congress refuses to hold this president accountable for his crimes while hundreds of thousands of Americans are doing time for lesser crimes, then we are welcoming fascism and dismantling our democracy. It's not Bob Miller's responsibility to tell Congress whether President Trump committed impeachable offenses, nor is it his responsibility to charge the president with a crime. It's Congress's responsibility to act as a check on a president who has abused his power or who has violated the law, and it's the strategically necessary thing to do if we are to defend the Constitution, fight for democracy, stem the tide of fascism, and win the next election. A great leader once said that we only have one thing to fear, and that thing is fear itself. We don't need to fear Donald Trump, and we don't need to let him get away with crimes either. Failing to hold the president to account for his crimes and impeachable conduct will backfire on the Democrats. As Trump presents himself as a persecuted victor, and the Democrats turn to attacking one another rather than focusing on removing and defeating a corrupt and incompetent president. Thank you. Wait, question. What would you say to Nancy Pelosi and the moderate strategists, consultants, who are adamantly opposed to the idea of going forward with the impeachment? Read this, book about the Nixon impeachment. Yeah, you know, I have plenty of choice words for them. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out what words I would say. But they have absolutely no justifiable reason 
for imposing the impeachment of this president. So their fear, their fear from what they have stated is that they don't have the votes to actually impeach him and that if they move forward with it and he is not impeached, it will hurt us somehow. Point of order, he will be impeached by the House. He will not be found guilty by the Senate. So right. So, so that's, the that's their excuse. That's at all. I, I think that uh, the impeachment investigation proceedings can influence the, the ultimate vote in the Senate. And uh, and that's because uh, politics is very fluid. So, I mean, you know, John's a big bet at me, but I think that's actually what happened uh, with Nixon was that there was more and more sentiment and more and more momentum um, during the process of the uh, investigations, and uh, which was leading to the prospect. But, but there was by no means certainty that Nixon could be impeached for that matter. So uh, the momentum, the political will, uh, and the political winds were, were blowing that way, and I think that could happen in this case too. It's not a given that the Senate will not vote for uh, impeachment. I feel the same way, and I also feel like what uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said the other day in making every congressperson go on record voting one way or the other in regards to the impeachment is a really crucial political move that we need to do at this point in history. However, I'm asking these questions right now because I do have a lot of moderates on my friend list and I know they'll see this video. So I'd like to address their arguments while we're talking about it. Sure. You want to say something, Yeah. <clears throat> Let me just pick up those. The bottom line is that the Senate is, is completely irrelevant because it, it, it's, it's going to be a very, very close call time-wise if the, if the Judiciary Committee can even you know, vote out some articles and if the House can even vote out some articles. Second, the whole situation is not static. It's extremely dynamic, as you pointed out. The Nixon era was entirely different as far as partisanship was concerned. There were uh, responsible and patriotic uh, Republicans, uh, some of whom voted out some of the articles against Nixon. Public opinion shifted from, uh, I think my, my recollection is before Sam Urban's committee started, 17% uh, of the public supported impeaching Nixon, and I guess what they understood by the word impeachment was not what it really means, which is indictment. They they understood it to mean removal. But, you know, based basically on Woodward and Bernstein and the rest of the press. And by the time the Urban Committee was finished, and and Peter Rodino's House Judiciary Committee was finished, the the support for it was way way over. 60, getting on to 70% supporting. That ain't gonna happen these days because the partisanship is just so much more built in. But underlying all of that, the whole purpose of impeachment is to have a trial in the Judiciary Committee of the House and then on the floor of the House, which will be heavily televised, which will be heavily educational, which will constitute a manifesto for the election. The, the, I mean, the very notion that there's time to even get something to the Senate, and there's no requirement that it ever get to the Senate. You show me where it's written that, that you can't pile 25 articles of impeachment up on the clerk's desk in the House and pass it and never give it to the sergeant of arms to take it across the hall and give it to the Senate. It doesn't say that. So. So that's why Nick, uh, Trump will never be acquitted by the Senate, because they'll never have a trial in the Senate. And I guess that's what they're saying now, right? Before Nancy Pelosi was saying, people were saying we need more support, the public's not there yet. Now they say we don't have the votes. Well, you know, Nancy Pelosi's been the roadblock to this all along. Right. If she changed her position, we would see everything flip. 
and all these people who have been terrified by Nancy Pelosi and all the, by the candidates that they're going to lose the election. That's really spreading fear. And that's what's happening. Go ahead. I want to give you something else to think about. And that